I've recently been running Arducopter on Matic F405 boards um, because it's a lot cheaper than a proper Pixorg. But for a while now I've wanted to try out the new um, fancy Pixorg queue. I do like their packaging, that's quite nice, isn't it? Anyway, I wanted to try out um, the new Pixel Cube and uh, just to see how it is to build with it and how it performs compared to a super cheap um, mini quad flight controller. So for those that don't know, um, the actual flight controller is the, the colourful cube on top. It has multiple redundant temperature controlled uh, IMUs in it and then the, the carrier board on the bottom, the black part, uh, just breaks out the connections. And this one is the, the ADS-B one with the ADS-B antenna. Anyway, um, recently, um, one of the companies that partnered to produce the Cube, um, Hex, they're made by Hex and Profi CNC. Hex have um, kind of started marketing this thing, which is the Hexsoon EDU450. So Hex, their name, soon probably from the Chinese company that actually makes it. And this is meant to be the first reference platform for Arducopter. So if you want to have a known setup that works well and that some of the developers themselves actually use for testing new features, this is what they use and what you can use. And despite the fact it's meant to be the reference platform, there is very little detail about this online. And for example, there's nowhere in the literature or any of the stores selling it that actually tells you what size the motors are. So I figured I would quickly go through and just show you what's in the box. Um, first of all, you get your top and bottom plate. I'm going to come back to these at the end and you will see why. Um, no spoilers, but these are not great. Okay, the first interesting thing about this, which I quite like, is that the arms are not circular. They are actually teardrop shape. I'll see if I can get a focus on those. This addresses one of my major complaints with circular arms, which is that they can twist. It's uh, it's quite hard when you're building the quad to actually make sure that you have um, the the motor mounts level with the um, with the center of the frame. And then when you crash, you can very easily twist the motor mounts on the arm. These are they look like injection molded plastic. They come kind of pre semi assembled with bolts. Yeah, these actually look pretty decent. The quality of the injection molding is very nice. Um, it doesn't look like they're the sort of the glass fiber impregnated plastic we're used to on like plastic um, mini quad frames, but I mean it's probably ABS or something, it'll be plenty strong enough. What does it say? Oh, it says Hexoon underneath. Uh, you get some landing gear legs, um, part assembled with um, the same hard plastic on the top with um, some brass insets. Center focus, come on, there we go. Um, I'm not a big fan of this sort of style of landing gear um, because it usually ends up being fairly unstable, especially for landing on you know slightly uneven ground and especially when letting the autopilot land for you. I find this sort of thing topples over quite easily and you smack your props into the ground. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use these. I might just 3D print um, four individual legs for the ends of the arms. You get two battery straps, you get one of the classic cheap Vanguard special folding GPS stalks. I don't like these, probably, probably won't use this one. Uh, you get some bullet connectors because the ESCs come with female bullets, but the motors do not come with male bullets, which seems slightly odd. I'm guessing they just bought what the uh, stockers could give them. Uh, you get some 14 gauge wire and a legit MS XT60 connector. We get a bunch more bolts, nylocks. Uh, we get a Matek um, PDB. Uh, I'm not sure what version this is. It's not in Matek packaging, which is interesting. It's just in a generic. Um, it has both 5 volt and 12 volt uh, regulators on it. Um, then we get to motors and electronics. So the motors you get are, so it's a 2216T motor, 880kV. Uh, look it up online, they do 3-cell and 4-cell. Uh, they sell these in a pack of 4 with props, and they, they also sell them in a pack of 4 with props and ESCs. Now I assumed that this kit would come with the T-motor ESCs, but actually it comes with some Hobbywing ESCs. Now these are almost identical. They are 
20 amp ESCs. They come with mystery, you know, firmware um, created internally by Hobbywing or T-Motor. Interestingly, they both, both the T-Motor um, ESCs and these Hobbywing ESCs seem to come with active braking enabled by default, which I'm not overly keen on for self-tightening props, um, but as they are quite small props, it shouldn't necessarily be an issue. Um, props look like... What are these? Do these even say what size they are? They don't actually say what size they are. That's... Oh, it says on the box that they're 1045s, but the props themselves aren't actually labelled. That's an interesting choice. And so these are your classic um, self-tightening props. I don't think they are Phantom style compatible. I think this upper thread is too small for that. That's the wrong one. Yeah, there we go. I mean, it's a fairly nice looking motor. Um, it's probably relatively efficient. I'm not sure whether it's um, the newest technology because the uh, the webpage for these shows them um, on flame wheel frames, which are not exactly um, particularly up to date. Okay, let's talk about these carbon center hub plates. Now, I've built maybe 20, 25 different drones of various sizes in the past four or five years. Everything from three inch micros up to 15 inch Articopter, you know, heavy lift quads. And I've used what I thought was a whole range of carbon fiber from, you know, fairly expensive premium, you know, original designs from Armatan and Project 399, right the way down to the cheapest and grottiest Banggood $19 special five inch clone frame, right? This stuff here, bearing in mind that this is a relatively expensive frame and powertrain kit, this is by far the absolute worst quality CNC carbon fiber that I've ever seen. Look at how messy this is, right? If I try and catch it in the light, you'll see that every single corner, every single edge, every single hole is absolutely dreadful. Look at this here, you can see the weave coming through. And on you know these mounting holes here, right here we've got like an entire corner that hasn't been knocked off properly, and this is all over the whole thing. It's not just one or two places. It's it's the whole thing. These edges look like they've been, I don't know, nibbled through with a pair of tin snips or something. And both plates are like this. Every single edge, every single hole on these will need going over with um, a set of files. Luckily, I, I have files for exactly that purpose, but this, as it stands right now, is not usable. It, it's not, um, you wouldn't actually want to build with this. You would end up with splinters and you would end up with um, little bits of carbon fiber breaking off, uh, potentially getting into electronics. And um, as many of us in this hobby have found out the hard way, carbon fiber is electrically conductive, so it can cause all sorts of issues. So um, big letdown for here. Oh, one final thing about the, um, the carbon plates, top plate and base plates, um, which is slightly puzzling. So this is meant to be a reference platform for the Arducopter project, particularly using the new Pixhawk 2Q. However, if you grab your, your cube in the standard carrier board, you will notice it has some nice brass threaded mounting holes, right, which are designed to allow you to bolt it securely to a frame. Unlike the old Pixhawk, um, the cube has uh, vibration isolation built into the flight controller itself, so you don't necessarily need to soft mount the whole thing on rubber bobbins anymore. Now, you would have thought, or at least I thought, that the bolt hole pattern would match the holes in the top plate, uh, but they don't. None of them match. Luckily, somebody on one of the, the discuss threads has already designed a 3D printed like adapter board, and likewise on the base plate, you can't actually fit a 30x30 30 30 or 30.5x30.5 um, PDB onto here. Here we go, standard 30.5 hole spacing. What are you meant to do with that? How are you meant to mount that? Like, it's it's not even simple to mount because there's barely any overlap, so it's not like you can just like put tape in the middle of it. Um, but again, there's um, a 3D printed part. In fact, the printer has literally just finished. Yeah, so there's this 3D printed part which connects to the four slots 
and then gives you 30.5 hole spacing on top. So yeah, mixed feelings. Um, I feel like they missed an opportunity in a few places. Um, they dropped the ball with regards to quality control. Um, it's not quite as kind of turnkey as I was expecting for the so-called reference platform. Um, but at the same time, there's some stuff I really like. These uh, teardrop-shaped arms do look really nice. Look forward to a build of this soon, um, and a hopefully uneventful maiden flight. I've been pretty good recently at remembering to invert the pitch axis when doing maiden flights on Ardicopter builds, and of testing on the ground beforehand as wiggling the, the stick towards backwards, left and right. So hopefully no unintended... Um, yeah, <laughs> look forward to that one.